Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah so I'll just remind where, where, we, where we are. Uh, let's start with Synfinity Station. We have compact manifold with uh, uh, tables, compact structures, electric structures, you might want to have deformation and uh, torsion with you. Uh, then, uh, if I come from the GZ wrong invariance, I get some quantum product on uh, super vector space. So it will be really treated as Z2 graded space, not Z graded. It will become all of my manifold. This coefficients in the field, which I reminded was rational number, typically, or cyclotomic atomic field if I do uh, some torsion. Okay, so I get uh, uh, this product, and the product it will be uh, uh, not one product, but depending on many, many parameters. Number of parameters is the dimension of cohomology, uh, of the rational coefficient of my space, uh, and parameters are of two types. It will be uh, variable t, which could be even or odd, corresponding to even or odd part of cohomology, and q, uh, which correspond to, some, uh, to h2. And variable q uh, could be, uh, in fact, uh, I don't have to go to the full uh, second homology group. It could be some smaller number of parameters q. Because uh, when I um, make generative series, I put a uh, uh, distribution of each homology plus beta as a q monomial product of qi to some power of some uh, integrals. And I want to be, to be because it will be form power series, I want these integrals to be integer and positive. Two integers guarantees that homology class are image of second homology with integer coefficients in, in real second homology. And uh, so the first constraints that are things are non negative and uh, get non negative integers. But now, uh, when I make the whole series, I want for each coefficient to have only finitely many beaters to contribute. Now, for this, uh, uh, and when you calculate correlator, you know what is the dimension of modular space because it's the dimension of fields which you put in. Uh, so what it results that if you're interested how many uh, homology classes of curves which are G effective represented by G homomorphic curves and with given uh, integrals of my forms omega and also first chain class, then should get a finite number. And this integral slice on not only octant but on octant times integers because integer, uh, integral first chain class would be arbitrary. Okay, so if I have this finiteness, uh, then I have a well defined gen uh, genetic series. So in my original uh, story, in the infinity case, I uh, said that number of parameters Q was equal to the rank of second homology. I take some basis of second homology. In the algebraic case, I, um, uh, I take smaller number, rank of neuron severity group. And in general, if you have Keller manifold, it didn't have h to zero, then algebraic curves lies in h11, so they really uh, have smaller rank lattice, so you don't need to go to measure uh, degrees with other classes. Now, so we can make smaller numbers, and in fact, one can go even to number one of parameters q, just pick one uh, ample line bundle, and that will be guarantee finiteness. And uh, when you do uh, decrease number of variables q and uh, uh, trade them for variables t, there will be no loss of information. Be, this, you get series which satisfy some properties that they come from series with actual right number of q. Yeah, so it's some simple remarks that one can uh, write generic series in different number of parameters. And, and at the end of my talk, you will see that it will be really very useful. OK. And those whole things one can encode in some abstract notion, which are called formal log Frobenius manifold of a field of characteristic zero, which will be this rational number, so it's what I'm So, so uh, uh, let, let, let's uh, see this definition. So we have a super vector space, Z2 grade space, okay. We have element one, it's, uh, in example, it's a generator one of H0 of your manifold. It's even element. Then we get non-degenerate co-pairing, kind of uh, uh, fundamental class, uh, dual fundamental class of diagonal. It's element of symmetric squares, which even, uh, in fact, this word non-degenerate, it's so one whole story one can uh, relax, one can forget non-degenerate. The whole story will work uh, in, the in the degenerate case, and it can be useful for a case when consider not compact manifold, but 
something is semi-positive boundary, you still get one, uh, you don't have correlators, but still get quantum product, and the whole story works uh, in the same way. Okay, uh, so that's ve super vector space. Now, next things which you have a formal smooth super scheme, uh, this device is normal crossing, it will be Frobenius manifold. Uh, this scheme uh, uh, is uh, just equal to uh, kind of form power series in several variables, which are even in odd, and some variables like u, uh, the L of them, could be one or many, and some even variables, and odd variables, uh, of course, participate as exterior algebra, so it didn't distinguish polynomials and form power series and odd variables. So you get this, this abstract algorithm, which is amorphic to this guy. Uh, divisor given by equations that one of variables q is equal to zero, so it's normal crossing divisor. Okay, but coordinates are not part of the game. Uh, uh, oh, no, coordinates it's uh, really not part of the game. I'll explain what is going on. So we have, uh, now we have a, a trivial bundle on this fiber H on a product, oh, sorry, it's not tether product, it's, it's product of my formal schemes and a fine line in coordinate u. So it will be formal in qt variables and actual in variety in u variables. And then I would like to have meromorphic connection here, uh, which uh, has a very special form in, uh, remind you of this connection, in du du to be have terms u minus 2 and minus 1, in du dt or q dq to have u, u minus 1 term, and that's it, and that should be flat. Yeah, so this, uh, there are three matrices here. G, which is constant matrix, it's just a constant, even an operator. But K and A are operators depending on parameters, on Q and T. And uh, this parameters, uh, bunch of matrices AI, I can organize them in, in a one form. I take some of AI, DTI, or D log QI. Get just one form with values and endomorphisms. So, what do you mean by O of f? It's algebra functions. It's uh, this algebra, ah, okay. which is written here. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> so the axiom that this connection is flat, and then there is something which allows to introduce flat coordinates on the base. Namely, you apply this matrix value to one form, do this vector 1h. And we get one form with values in uh, vector, super vector space, uh, with logarithmic poles. And this uh, axiom that this thing gives an isomorphism of logarithmic tangent space and trivial bundle. When you get the things, you, you pick any coordinate in H, you get one form, a logarithmic form on, on Frobenius manifold. It will be closed form, it will be differential some function, it will be, so you, that's how you fix flat coordinates in, in this. Uh, situation. And final uh, thing which is today play, play really no role, we'll play role in the next lecture, uh, there is uh, in interaction with sync with the pair pairing. So uh, uh, all these uh, operators, K, A and G, K and A are uh, self-adjoint respect to pairing and G is anti-self-adjoint. Uh, and a geometric meaning is this, when you have this connection, you have a pairing at fiber point u and minus u, which is symmetric under permutation. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's a way to encode all this data in kind of geometric terms. You get manifold, bundle, connection, and all this stuff. Okay. Now let's pick a point of uh, my uh, Frobenius manifold over some uh, non-archimediate field. Uh, you can, for example, uh, just substitute uh, instead of variable QT, say they are equal to certain series in some variable in capital T, some new dummy variable, uh, which starts as a, in positive powers of T. And powers could be integer, re rational, real, as you like. And then the whole thing will make sense. I get convergent because the coefficients were rational numbers and have evolution zero. Uh, if my series are convergent uh, for some embedding of field in complex numbers, then I can make actual complex numbers instead of 6x. And now, for a moment, I want to forget about 
most part of the whole story, this unit element co-pairing connection along Frobenius manifold. Just I have operator G, one even operator, and another even operator K at a given point. So I get vectors, super vector space, maybe of some larger field, and two and even endomorphisms. And super will play absolutely no role, one can forget about the super, just to take direct sum of two vectors, even non part. Yeah, so what? So that's the basic object of uh, linear algebra for me for a moment, will be vector space, so super, uh, so super can forget, and two endomorphisms, and then it gives you a connection and trivial bundle. Yeah, so that's a central object in all the story, this connection of this special form. So, now we want to understand what, what does it mean to have such a connection. Uh, we can uh, approach it in the following way. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, if we uh, remove zero from a fine line, <coughs> then we get a vector bundle, trivial, again, trivial vector bundle, with a uh, connection, algebraic connection, with the same bundle. And section of the bundle is uh, Laurent polynomials in U with values in my uh, vector space. Uh, now, uh, I want to say that this bundle is tri tri uh, trivialized. So what does it mean? I, I, I can extend it, extend it to zero. Uh, let's accept the formal neighborhood of zero. Uh, and uh, by, in this case, you just take Lauren uh, uh, Taylor series in U. And when you extend to zero, I want to ask that the connection have pole of order two. Yeah, so, so before I have just abstract algebraic connection, but now extend it to zero, so the pole has an order two. Uh, also, I can extend it to infinity, just take again uh, Laurent uh, Taylor series in the universe. Yeah, and, and this guy, if you one can easily check, has a pole of order one at infinity. So if you get u du, it will have uh, no poles at infinity. Okay, so, uh, so what you, what you can, then we get glued bundle, and this bundle is trivial, just by construct. Uh, and conversely, if you have uh, your algebraic bundle on uh, uh, i1 minus 0 and extend both to 0 infinity such that the global bundle is trivial, then the same is you get just vector space, space of sections. And, and then automatically you'll have this expansion because uh, in the uh, trivialization you write what is your connection. It will be certain Laurent polynomial in U. And the conditions has second order pole of 0 and first order pole at infinity. Uh, says that uh, this uh, Laurent polynomial has only two e terms, k minus 2, k minus 1, which I denote k in g. Yeah. Uh, so this is just kind of a geometric reformulation of uh, this formula that we get some so bundle. Like, like, like this, is, this, this is just like the elementary stuff, right? Everything is yeah, elementary. Yeah, but this in particular. Is this is particularly yeah. elementary, yeah. <laughs> 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 Yeah, so. <coughs> yeah. What do you call it a manifold when it's clearly linear? Sir? You call it a Frobenius manifold when it's linear? It's linear, yeah, but uh, uh, later you'll see some. Yeah, it's, it's kind of it's historical uh, notion. You get Frobenius manifold, but it has some kind of metric, function, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah of course it's linear space, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, quantum product, quantum product, you get multiplication tangent bundle depending on a point. You get a fine structure, but also get, yeah, so it's tricky business. So now, uh, 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 I will, it will be convenient for, to develop some intuition what to do with these equations to make a Fourier transform in inverse variable, U, U inverse. It will be still kind of considered like form of some another fine line. And we get, uh, Holonic D model some dual coordinate z. If you look on kind of dimension, z will be proportional to u. So it's, it looks to be no reason to make a new notation, but it's really a different letter. So uh, my D module, which I have before on a fine uh, a line, a uh, punctured uh, line, it's as uh, uh, a vector space, it's the same Laurent polynomials in H. But the structure of the module in coordinate z is uh, given by us, uh, apply what is Fourier transform, exchange derivative and multiplication, and then we get the following formula. 
So consider this vector space, all Laurent polynomials is always in H, and define operator Z is u squared u plus k, k, k plus u g. So there's no poles here in u. It usually disappears. And operation d dz became u inverse. So the commutator of this guy is equal to 1. It should be invalid alpha. OK. Uh, now, uh, what I can do? Uh, before I have this reformulation of, of my vector space and pair of operators, as uh, uh, the model on uh, 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 vector bundles connection on uh, a fine line minus zero, uh, h and delta, uh, and, abla, and then I get extension to zero and extension to infinity. Let's forget about extension to infinity. So it will be a slightly different structure, weaker structure. And how to formulate the whole story in terms of this guy E? Uh, yeah, so we can formulate this the following way. We get, uh, so we say that you have d module in uh, variable z. Uh, the fact is that the whole story has some kind of regular singularity in infinity says that this model has uh, regular singularity at infinity. And the run cohomology of this uh, fine line coefficient with this d model is zero. So what does it mean? Maybe I just explain. If you have some demodule E, how to calculate the RAM homology? Uh, you multiply E to one forms of a fine line, multiply by functions of a fine line, to, yeah, to come of E. We get this DRAM differential. But as a vector space, because we identify dz uses a basis, it's just the same as gamma of e given dz gamma of e. You can not multiply by dz. So it's operator of differ differentiation. And the fact that it has zero commodity, it means it has no kernel, no co-kernel. So it means it's isomorphism. So it means it's due disease invertible. Yeah, so it's a very elementary basic fact. So this fact that the, my story uh, lies variable u was invertible in the module. Goes that the DODC is invertible, so we get this exact reformulation uh, of H and Nabla with these conditions. Uh, but uh, uh, we have extension to zero uh, H plus. I, I ignore at the moment H, H minus. Extension to zero uh, is uh, uh, given by just this sub subspace. And this subspace also one can Sorry, modify. Which subspace? I can see. Which subspace? E, e uh, greater than zero, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. One can introduce not one subspace, but full uh, kind of scales subspaces depending on integer parameter nu. You can see the things uh, multiplied by nu. Uh, one can go from one to another by this invertible operator d or dz, which is u inverse. So it's there's really no so, no the same information here. So you can see the one of the subspaces like like greater than equal to zero. And this will be sub-module, because you immediately see that it's preserved by operator z, because it have, it's only increased powers of u, and preserved by DODZ inverse. So it's kind of bizarre property uh, 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 phrased in the uh, uh, way that when DODZ is in invertible. And because it's preserved by operator multiplication by z, it's, it's, it's a quasi-coherent shift. In fact, it will be a coherent shift. It will be all sub-module of my d-module, which is uh, it faces bizarre property preserved by DODZ inverse. So we can choose any of them, but uh, when we choose new large enough, that, uh, it's easy to see it will be torsion free shift. It will be a vector bundle which coincides with my, my D module outside of singularities. And what, what's going on? Because it serves this kind of trivialized, uh, you have. Um, you will have meromorphic connection on it. Uh, this E uh, greater than mu will be bundled with some meromorphic connection. And in trivial one, and the meromorphic connection will have this form, do dz plus this g plus nu divided by z minus k inverse. So this connection depends on this parameter nu, but if you change nu uh, to nu plus one, it will be gauge equivalent if nu is sufficiently large, and sufficiently large means that it's Negative numbers do not intersect spectrum of z. 
in real life example for quantum homology go to dimension over two. Yeah, so it's kind of way to go from kind of a bit more abstract story about the model to something very concrete story with connections. Yeah, so now, uh, so we, uh, why I introduce this Fourier transform? Because in this uh, Fourier transform, there's something which is kind of very uh, easy to understand. I call analytic decomposition theory. Yeah. Suppose uh, on a complex plane, which is my Z plane, I choose a collection of disks, disjoint disks, uh, dj, and choose some collection of uh, Gabriel of pass, which goes to minus infinity, disjoint pass. Uh, so I fix this data. Now I consider two sets or categories, one can say, I consider holonomic D modules on a fine line, which is regular at infinity, the rank homology is zero, uh, singular subset, uh, singularity is a six, uh, it's some collection of points inside this union of disks. What do you mean singularity? Uh, where it's not a vector bundle. Ah. The models, uh, holonomic D modules can vector bundle so not finitely many points. And this choice of coherent submodule, which is uh, as a subset closed under D or D inverse, which makes sense because the rank homology is zero, and the quotient will be torsion, uh, actually will be infinite type torsion shift, uh, supported at uh, my uh, singularities. Uh, this E plus is coherent and quotient is quasi coherent, kind of infinite negative Lorentz terms of Lorentz series at torsion. Yeah, so get this data which we uh, came up for getting some stuff. And uh, the claim that the same data it's kind of it's expressed through itself in a sense. Uh, I claim that if you have such a thing, you have a collection of D modules and uh, the subset EG plus uh, for each disk which will be kind of local contribution of things. This, this, this D modules uh, will be bundles of a smaller rank, and uh, then will be a gluing data. A gluing data, uh, uh, so this my Gabriel pass will play a ro uh, role to kind of uh, uh, fix ambiguity in this gluing data. If I fix this pass, uh, this gluing data just collection of linear maps from uh, this point when my this green pass touch uh, the disk of one guy to uh, uh, fiber to another, I think, for any two different order of pair of disks. Yeah, that's arbitrary maps. Yeah, that's uh, uh, maybe I explain a little bit of the story about, uh, around these maps. Yeah, uh, this construction is purely transcendental. It's not algebraic construction. It's uh, kind of Riemann. Uh, it's based on its Riemann-Hilbert correspondence. Uh, first, uh, let's consider uh, the module, which is regular holonomic the module. In on a fine line, uh, with the rank homology zero. Uh, so it's, uh, my demodules could be irregular at, at, at singular points. I, I, I don't assume it, so there's one conjecture that it's regular, but here it's a very general story. So suppose I consider a regular holonomic demodule with edge drama equal to zero. Because it's regular holonomic demodule, it's the same as perverse shift by Riemann Hilbert correspondence with shift. I don't know if you know the shift. Uh, <laughs> Sigma with uh, R gamma equal to zero. And, but now it's a question of topology. What is perverse shift for R gamma equal to zero? So this is something which is Ludmilla and Tony we analyzed uh, 10 years ago. Uh, it's very simple. First, it's in, th in this case, it's actually a constructible shift with R gamma equal to zero. And then one can uh, describe in terms of linear algebra. 
It's just a collection of some uh, points in, in C. Find it set. And then if you choose this path, to these points, you choose this path, it will be the same as collection of vector spaces. Then you get uh, uh, operator T I, I from vector space to itself, which is automorphism. And then we get operator T I J from V I V J for I non equal to J arbitrary. And how uh, these things appear uh, as this in real life? Uh, what does it mean this constructible shift is gamma equal to zero? There are many ways. You can imagine, for example, that you have some map from some uh, Variety to C. This is a fine line. And just to get a map of anything to C, and it, which is have kind of finitely many bad points in the image. Then, uh, then you can immediately get a shift. Namely, I, I, I'll tell you what is the stock of the shift at any point. The stock of the shift of any point. Uh, <coughs> point Z will be cohomology. You choose any index, pick, pick I up, and you choose any index of what? Of y and pi inverse of of pair. I consider the order of pair. And then you get constructible shift whose R gamma is equal to zero. I can use actually not only commodity, anything, like K theory, it's, uh, and to choose individual things is not really in direct category, individual commodity proof gives you this uh, remarkable shift with R gamma equal to zero. And now, uh, what is, for example, the space VI? You consider uh, 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 the following thing. You consider disks around the I, and VI will be commodity of pair. Oh, sorry, maybe it's something. Uh, commodity of pair, uh, and namely, a pre-image of the disk and pre-image of this boundary point on the disk. It has a of, of pair and uh, then um, uh, one can go for arbitrary disk which contains several the eye and if you play this game you see you get this data and conversely this data get this so ships. Pi? Pi? No, if you have op op projection. Yeah. My potential, yeah, could be arbitrary map from any space to to C. It's really elementary, two-dimensional. So. Uh, no, 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 no. It's example. In this example, I get constructible uh, shift with gamma equal to zero, and all the things are, have uh, this clear interpretation. I'm sorry, I'm just confused. Why is the R gamma equal to zero? For like, if I look at the middle dimension, don't I see the vanishing side? It's not. It's not vanishing. It took, it took, it's any dimension. It's not middle dimension. But if I pick specifically the middle dimension, wouldn't I see the? This could be some vanishing. Yeah, it could be some vanishing cycle. Yeah. Wouldn't that, that global? Would that, wouldn't that be global cohomology not equal to zero? I mean, I think. It's I don't know. No, I think cohomology. No, V I is cohomology of pair. It's uh, and if you if you have really kind of like proper map, it will be a global section of Venetian cycles this fiber. Uh, all I'm trying to say is that uh, the, the symbols uh, of a vibration seem to define a class in HN of the total space relative to fiber and infinity. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, one can try to think here. Uh, but, but they don't get global sections as you move Z everywhere. Well, no, but what is the definition of global? I mean, what? What is R gamma? R gamma should R gamma, R gamma starts with global sections. Yeah. No, R gamma it means it's zero homology and first homology for constructible shift. Okay. Yeah, it's something, yeah. No, no, I consider constructible shifts such as it has no global sections and no first homology. It's certain constraint and no second homology yeah, so, yeah, so will be no here. So it's monotony invariant one percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's everything reduced to the stupid linear algebra. And uh, the description depends on the choice of path, and break group acts by automorphism of this algebra. So then why you replace 
no, no, it just, no, it, no, it explains a particular case. It's not here. Explain what is a regular holonomic demodule gets this data. Yeah. Yeah, now, what, what, what goes on here? Uh, how we get, uh, what I claim this gluing data is, and this gluing data is exactly the same like this regular things. Yeah. How we get this perverse shift uh, of the spaces we have from your maybe irregular demo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so the question how we get, uh, uh, in my general stations, it's, my think is not necessarily regular, it, it marked points. Unified spaces uh, uh, associated to the disks. Uh, yeah, one can, can one, for each disk I define certain space Vj, and Vj defined as the following. It's defined as the rank homology of analytic demodial of the disk Dj with uh, with coefficients in this uh, relative to the pair point on the boundary. Then my green things. Of this coefficients in this analytic demodule uh, uh, E restricted to the disk. So it's not algebraic uh, calculation here. I, I just make analytic demodule, but still I get vector spaces. And by the same game, I get this bunch of gluing data. This operators, TII will be monodromy if you move this boundary points. And DIJ will be the things. And uh, yeah, so it's, we get this gluing data. And then it's a bit long story how you extract this uh, residual uh, demodules. You make quotient of the things. Uh, so this whole thing can be made an actual holonomic demodule in a disk. It's the same story. And then you mod out by uh, maximal uh, trivial sub-demodule. We get this uh, local EJ. And EJ plus is inherited here. Yeah, so we get the story uh, that you get really one-to-one -one correspondence. You glue things which localized in different pieces by this gluing data. Uh, this also can be rephrased in terms of Stokes uh, parameters, uh, but uh, it's a few in the story. Yeah, so, so we have this way, if we kind of bound that my moving point sits inside certain domains, uh, then I have descriptions of kind of individual local pieces and some this topological data. Now, uh, if I analyze isomorphic deformation of the pairs, I'm going to have bundle with connection in some, some parameter spaces, not necessarily for Venus manifold. Mm -hmm. uh, then I get isomorphic deformations of, one can analyze what's going on, we have just collection of isomorphic deformations of individual local pieces, but const the gluing data is keep, uh, kept constant in the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's kind of with the deformation. And what is the corollary? If you consider analytic Frobenius manifold, which gives you some this, uh, mm, this uh, yeah, isomorphic deformation of such guys, actual of complex numbers. So if you can analytical Frobenius, but should remove if go outside of divisor because my connections in single room divisor, then the whole thing splits as a model is as a product of certain kind of weaker things as Frobenius manifold, like deformation of pieces in the individual disks. And um, so this individual guys uh, will be not exactly Frobenius manifold, they carry flat connection on a bundle, regular to infinity, second order pole, but there's no this trivialization to at infinity. There's some uh, little piece of data is missing. And in order to get Frobenius manifold, one had extend this guy to infinity. Uh, uh, this bundle on a fine line in U variable. And uh, because we extend using uh, extension of have poles of order one, it's, easy, it's the same as to uh, uh, near infinity, uh, we choose a locally constant filtration, like by integers or say uh, near infinity, and then we defined kind of extension canonically, it's the same as one to extension of your bundle to this connection first of the pole. It's a, some kind of framing. Uh, mm, in a real life situation, there will be some lattices, and this la filtration will be the integral flex, so there will be no continuous parameters here. Yeah, so it essentially says that uh, this Frobenius manifolds, uh, if you organize these things in several disks, splits in the product of other Frobenius manifolds with different affine structure. Now, that's, that's the main story here. 
Yeah, so it was uh, uh, um, uh, analytic version, and it took us a uh, really too long time because we wanted to translate it to something calculable without transcendental methods. Uh, and it took us really long, many, many months. And eventually, we got uh, translation to uh, really formal version, which turns out to be very, very easy. So one can forget about all this uh, complicated gluing date and so on. Uh, and it will be formal log version. So we start with, uh, again, field of characteristic zero. We get the formal, uh, introduce some kind of notion which will be convenient here, formal log u connection. What it will be? You get the formal supermanifold is only one base point. So it will be spectrum of, of form power series rings and even in odd variables. And uh, there are some, there is device with normal crossing, so some even variables called q. T could be even or not. And then I get a super vector bundle on uh, these things. And now variable u uh, will be formal variable. And I want to have flat memory of connection with the same pole constraints as I had before. So when I consider uh, covariant variance with u square du, u dti or u qi dqi, I get something which has no poles defined operator from sections to sections. Yeah, so I get this uh, abstract guy. So I, I don't assume that the dimension of the base is equal to the rank of the fiber. It could be just any family. But in this situation, I have an operator acting in the fiber, in the fiber at zero. Namely, I take uh, uh, this covariant uh, distribution of u squared u, and it gives you operator uh, uh, at fiber. Uh, it's well-defined term, so you get certain endomorphism of this vector space. Now, uh, this is a very simple analog of this my decomposition story for in this formal world. Uh, now, assume that my super vector space with this endomorphism uh, sitting at point zero is decomposed as a uh, direct sum of certain subspaces with endomorphisms and different pieces have no common eigenvalues. It will be uh, things like uh, disjoint disks containing uh, different eigenvalues. So I put some eigenvalues here, some eigenvalues there, so it will be like collection of disks. But in a completely formal way, so it works on any field. And the claim in this case, this decomposition point zero, you can extend uniquely to the whole neighborhood, formal neighborhood, and this u and Q variables, Q variables, everything is form power series. Uh, uh, such it will be direct sum of this formal log U connections over the same base. And proof is very, very elementary. It's just step by step in the U expansion. You see that you should divide by difference of eigenvalues. So you get some. Sh sh should I? Should I imagine that this is the case because somehow you're taking straight arcs going to the left? Yeah. No, 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 no. The main idea is that it's, if you go to formal classification of differential equations, you forget about Stokes data, you forget about gluing data. Yeah, okay. yeah. That's that's, that's the intuition here. Yeah. So there's no gluing data here. It's uh, it's much simpler here. And uh, so you get uh, this. Uh, there are two results. It's the first one that you have formal decomposition theorem, very elementary, just step by step. And there is. Another one, uh, uh, I recall that for go from this stuff to actual Frobenius manifold, flat coordinates, you need to ch ch choose some framing. What will be framing if you work in form power series without assuming any convergence? Sorry, the framing from the other point of view was what was happening at infinity. Yes, right? yes, yes. Now you're phrasing it in this thing even though it's formal. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, framing is the following. Suppose I have a uh, formal log U connection. Uh, yeah, it's still not flat coordinates, it's uh, like extension to infinity. Uh, no. uh, it's a choice of trivialization called phi uh, of my uh, formal bundle. So I just identify this base multiplied by constant vector space, super vector space. And such that my connection uh, have exactly these right terms. One over <coughs> square, one u. So you, you can uh, now extend to u. See, you can projective line. Okay, you get 
with these guys. Uh, in, in fact, one can prove uh, from the equations that g is not a function, it's a constant. And there's a second theorem, which is a little bit uh, more uh, difficult, but not much. It's extension of framing. Uh, assume that we are given a trivialization of my bundle, which is uh, given the framing if you go or put your parameter q and t equal to zero. So it will be in just a variable u, we make it straight, and also uh, derivative of qi u qi also make it straight. Uh, these things uh, do not change if you, uh, if you make a uh, change, uh, change of framing trivial at q t equal to zero. This exactly is these three terms, this ai terms uh, um, they will stay the same, they, they do not change. Yeah. So now this k tilde, k minus 2 tilde, k minus 1 tilde, and this a minus 1 i corresponding to q variables are not uh, functions, just um, operators, even an endomorphism of h. Now, the assumption is, suppose that these guys are all nilpotent, a, a, i are nilpotent. Uh, I don't really understand uh, uh, intrinsically why it's so, but it's, uh, calculation shows that it's, it's the right condition. Actually, not the right conditions could be uh, nilpotent plus constant, a joint operator should be nilpotent. Yeah, suppose this all operators are nilpotent, uh, then there exists unique framing, which uh, extends your framing at point qt equal to zero. And the proof is step by step, again, in qt expansion. If you go to variable t, it will be, uh, you don't use this importance condition, it's very easy. And if you go to q, you get some kind of tower of equations, and you resolve exactly because using this part is important. Yeah, so it's some short calculation, which I will not show it to you. Yeah, so it's, I think it's true, true theorem. Yeah, now um, I will tell you about applications of all this thing. It will be to, now go to, go back to geometry. Suppose I have my almost complex manifold with tame almost complex structure, and I take a closed almost complex submanifold of co-dimension at least two, complex dimension two. Then I can make a blow up. Uh, mm -hmm. The blow up, uh, like in uh, integral case, the blow up contains exceptional divisor. Uh, so outside of I don't nice, you can uh, over y you uh, you have a vibration, exceptional divisor. The fiber will be kind of normal direction from projective complex projective space, and automatically all these guys are tame. Uh, it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, 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 See, I don't even know how to write down complex structure. Yeah, it's, still it's yeah, maybe a bit. I think it's fine. You, you still get almost. Uh, maybe we can deform almost complex structure. You, you don't need really complex structure. You need up to some deformation. I, mean, I think if the complex structure is integrable near the point, I can do it. Yeah. It's not it wouldn't be yeah, no. Sorry. It wouldn't be differential in general. It's no. But anyway, you can, make, you can make an integral. Yes, yes. And I claim that I can also make a uh, check that it's a stain. Uh, that's uh, actually um, not totally trivial story uh, because uh, uh, on x tilde, you, can, you have some symplectic form on x. You take pullback. It will be not positive, it will be semi positive. But then you get a uh, like, uh, canonical class. And then you can make linear combinations, and um, canonical class make its positive a long divisor. And then you can make appropriate linear combination, take pullback of uh, Keller form with very big multiple, so it will dominate outside of divisor, and near divisor will get uh, both things will have positive. Yeah, so the same story is true in algebraic geometry. If you have projective variety, you get smooth sub-variety, it will be automatically projective, it's trivial. But if you make blow up, it's also get uh, projective by kind of similar reasoning. Okay, as I explained uh, to you in the very beginning, uh, when you write this Frobenius manifold, the right coordinates q, we, we are kind of free to do whatever we want. We can make small number of q, larger number of q, and I'll take only one q. Uh, and for this, I use only one uh, symplectic form on x, this integer homology class. And it use as a uh, form controlling my stuff uh, upstairs and, and the blow up, the pullback of this form x. 
It's not strictly positive. Uh, but uh, in all this business, when we want to make formal series, we should have finiteness of homology classes if we fix uh, degree with speak my form and degree with first, uh, first chain class. And both together uh, make again your ample class, so you get finiteness uh, on the nose. Uh, so it's, one can go to this uh, uh, semi positive guy cell in this case. And uh, the goal of, uh, of, of all the story is to calculate use th uh, this point of, uh, around which we make all expansion and calculate growth invariance of x tilde in terms of growth which invariance of x, y chain classes of normal bundle to y, and the restriction map comparing homology and Poincare dualities in this case. Yeah, so it will be certain universal formula, so uh, which all this procedure will give. Uh, so we have this base point, when variable q equal to zero, t equal to zero. Uh, so curves, uh, when q is equal to zero, it means that uh, I have curves uh, which have degree zero respect to my this degenerate form. And it means that uh, if I project down to x, I get a point. And there are, uh, so it means that there are things of two types. Either I get constant map to, to x tilde, which was from the very beginning, or I get non-constant map, but this, this should lie in one of these projective spaces in vibration of exceptional divisor. Now I can see the quantum multiplication at this limiting point by this first chain class. And by dimensional reasons, uh, because uh, I, I see that among this no composite curve in projective space, only lines <coughs> in the curve of degree 2, 3 will give too large uh, dimension. So I get just two types of uh, thing. And if I identify uh, there is canonical identification of commodity of SZ to graded space, commodity of X tilde and commodity of X and many commodity of Y. Uh, when I get the separator, I get something like this. It's uh, here's the piece corresponding to commodity of X. And here I multiply by first chain plus one. It will be an important operator. Then there will be something mixing this together, some upper triangle class. And here I get uh, uh, such matrix. Uh, this comes from a multiplication of first chain class of this dx, which will be this project space, and it will, uh, uh, it's constant maps, and this com guy comes from multiplication from coming from lines. It's a kind of basic calculation, it's only calculation you know how to do in all this ground feature invariance, like calculation of projective space. So I get this matrix, and then I immediately see that the spectrum is very simple. It gets zero because many, many times from this guy. And you get m minus 1 times m minus two right, roots of 1 from this operator. It's something like contribution of projective space. But we're assuming that. Uh, sorry. I but, but, but each of them has multiplicity cohomology of y. Yes, it's, it has multiplicity of cohomology of y, and this has multiplicity cohomology of x. We're assuming that x is cloudy up? No, I don't assume anything. But it's a classical product. It's a classical case. And okay. Yeah. Yeah, this, this, this uh, 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 canonical bundle will be essentially... Uh, 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 but shouldn't we see the, the, the quantum products? Ah, maybe, oh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. It's m minus 1 plus, uh, sorry, pl pl plus, plus classical multiplication, which is upper, uh, uh, upper diagonal. Yeah, so it's a little bit more complicated. Maybe you're right. It's, it's something like... No, uh, you, get, you get m minus 1 over diagonal, and, and then you get quantum, you get your classical, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Q is long. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're having a debate about whether this is the classical product with C1 of Tx or the quantum. What does Q equals 0 mean? Q is like log T. Yeah? Q equals 0, yeah. Okay. So Q equals 0 means like. Classical product. You raise q to power degree. It's it's a, it's a classical product because it's q to the beta. The the two parts is q to the q to the beta. You, yeah, you can see just constant term. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so it was a little mistake here. It's not m minus one, but each block it's kind of constant matrix plus plus nil quartet matrix. But it still doesn't change anything with a, with a, with, a, with a, uh, spectrum. Yeah, so get a bit complicated, guy. Okay? Oh, by the way, uh, one also have gradient here, and the claim 
uh, this, when you write this equation, make Fourier transform, you get motivic variation of host structure, which is not obvious, <laughs> but it's a true fact. Uh, and one can write monodromy, explicit matrices. So what is the change for us in No, no, uh, the change is here. It's not not a constant. Constant it, because it's it's actually a block. It's homology of y. It will be multiplication by constant plus classical multiplication yeah. by first chain plus of the y. Yeah, so it's a bit. Uh, should add m minus one plus c. <laughs> multiplication by c one. Okay, so one gets this. Uh, uh, so can it also? What's, what does the upper right corner mean? It's it's there again minus. Uh, it's uh, just uh, minus which, one. Which vector spaces does that? Call it's come out of y to y because it's this is y y y y. It's also y y. Here. So in that decomposition, we're not seeing the x part. In no, no, no. I think it, it's no. kind of a block upper triangle here. We got this spectrum and this spectrum. And this is this predicated in some of, on, on the second part. So spectrum are uh, really unit. And connections of quantum Yeah, so it's pretty uh, complicated uh, connection, but it's uh, the claim if you make this Fourier transform, make this division, uh, this blah, 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 you, uh, it's actually some commodity uh, of some mix, variation of some mix host structures, kind of commodity of which I didn't figure out. Okay, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that's the calculation. And what, what, what really goes on? So consider the spectrum at the limit point. You have zero and uh, 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 roots of one multiplied by <laughs> constant. So it's, it's at x of y, the commodity of x, commodity of y. There many, many times. Yeah, that's a limiting point. Now we deform a uh, variety of Q2, uh, uh, Q and T, I claim what happens, this point will separate, get uh, more eigenvalues, exactly like rank of uh, whatever you should get here. And one can do a simple calculation. Let's uh, consider projective subspace and projective space. It's a toric variety. We know everything about fun toric varieties. And that's given by Laurent polynomials. And Laurent polynomials is this guy. And if you ask you uh, your computer algebra program, or you can do it by hand, calculate critical values, you get exactly this picture. You get small things uh, which looks like almost uh, regular polygons of right size, and, uh, which will be contribution of space. It's, it's uh, a regular polygon without zero. So you get the six without zero. And uh, now we can apply formal decomposition theorem because my Frobenius manifold will be pro uh, locally uh, have my variation of things will be product of different variations. Mm -hmm. For each variation, I have used extension of framing theorem, so I get a new framed connection of my Frobenius manifold, and it's kind of a locally outside of the device. I will split in product of small Frobenius manifold with new new. Uh, things to get a fine structure, so you get some one forms. You get a lot of closed ferritive uh, one forms. Now apply elements uh, uh, one in H X and one in H I in this identification. Then they get uh, uh, vector space value of one forms. It gives you flat coordinates. So you get new flat coordinates for individual factor, uh, and it will be some kind of individual uh, Frobenius manifolds. And the conjecture is the small Frobenius manifolds are should be Frobenius manifolds of x and y. Uh, who else is, should be, have the right dimension? Uh, it's completely universal. Yeah, I don't have a proof, but uh, it's, it looks uh, natural for many, many reasons. And uh, like you get like Foucault categories, pieces of Foucault categories have the same size, the same dimension of model as Foucault categories. So why, why should be different one? They already have a universal family. Yeah, so it's not real proof. But I think it's maybe proven already. We'll hear on Thursday talk. Maybe. Yeah. So uh, so maybe it's already true. So it's at least it's kind of a very very well formed conjecture and and something which completely uh, kind of algorithmic one can put uh, make from it closed formula. Computer can calculate it and it can actually solve algorithms. Can make from it in arbitrary operands instead of <laughs> things we can make about algebraic cycles. All these things. Like Joe operate. Yeah, so it's a completely general conjecture which should be proven in two worlds, both in symplectic world and in algebraic world. 
Yeah, so that's maybe uh, the end of the story. So. What you say? Uh, 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 when did this end work? When we did the splitting of the formal differential equation. Yes, yes, yeah. Um, so normally, when we do the HLT theorem in higher dimensions, you, you can have turn points where the formal decomposition doesn't work. Um, why doesn't that happen as you move along for a bit? No, but everything is uh, everything is done in the level of form <laughs> power series. And, uh, uh, there's no, no actual complex numbers in the... Oh, so it's formal in the... In, in everything, yeah, it's formal in all the actions. Huh? When you write, if you say deform a bit here and here, can it happen that if you deform too much, like some of the physical values go up? Yes, yes, no, you can deform... Uh, 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 can, uh, 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 as far as you think it makes sense. For example, we can before all this logic of ring, it will be series of such, so it's to the always do. But all complex numbers, it's just uh, up to convergence radius you can do. So it's, uh, yeah, in fact, here is this actually interesting example here. It's, uh, here Q is a small number, but because it's uh, of positivity here, Q could be take arbitrary values, right? could go to plus infinity. And if it goes to plus infinity, uh, then it will be uh, something different. Uh, if it goes to plus infinity, uh, then you get uh, 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 kind of, uh, again regular polygon of regular polygons, but of different size, so there's nothing in, in inside. And the reason is it's in, in this limit, uh, you, you write your tree not as a blow up, but as a blow up in this case is actually bundle with fiber projective space uh, M minus 1 over another projective space P A plus 1. We're talking about this example. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, or, or P A. Yeah, yeah. You, take, you, you make it a bundle. Uh, and, mm. and, uh, and for projective bundles, there is another thing. Uh, this should be another result. Mm -hmm. In the projective form, you, you should get, have copies of your uh of the base repeated many times. So it's so this transition if Q goes from zero to infinity, these things kind of move another and are, are arrange a different uh, collection of regular polygons. So it's just a long answer. Any other questions?